we have learned about cholesterol which is of animal origin whereas when we are discussing about plant sterols they are phyto origin they are basically both sterols and stanols which are abundantly present in various foods and also we are going to discuss about the soy phytoestrogens examples of soy phytoestrogens like diadigin genistin glycetin these are the important molecules which works as a powerful antioxidants are present abundantly in the soybean whereas the plant sterols and stanols are also present in various nuts and oil seeds and also various fruits and vegetables also which they could also compete with the cholesterol therefore they inhibit the absorption of cholesterol absorption and they works against ldl cholesterol oxidation therefore these sterols and stanols particularly in the ester forms have more solubility therefore absorption takes place and they could do the antioxidant activity um, at the cellular level what are stanol ester stanol esters is a heterogeneous group of chemical compounds known to reduce the level of low density lipoprotein that is ldl cholesterol in blood when ingested though to a much lesser degree than prescribed drugs such as statins usually prescribed by the physicians the starting materials is the phytosterols from the plants these are first hydrogenated to give a plant stanol which is then esterified with a mixture of fatty acids also derived from plant sources plant stanol esters are found naturally occurring in small quantities in fruits vegetables nuts seeds cereals legumes vegetable oils etc stanol ester is often added to rapeseed oil based margarine or other foods for its health benefits studies have indicated that consumption of 2 to 3 grams per day may provide a reduction in low density lipoprotein cholesterol of about 10 to 15% the compound itself passes through the gut without entering the blood stream or lymph its presence however reduces both the amount of cholesterol the body absorbs from food and the reabsorption of the cholesterol components of bile in the early 50s plant derived sterols were observed to decrease serum cholesterol levels the effective dose in humans was reported to be between 5 to 10 grams per day when given in divided doses on the basis of these data plant sterols were briefly used in the reduction of blood cholesterol levels before the introduction of pharmacological agents with higher efficacy and patient acceptance the resurgence of interest in plant derived sterols is now coupled with the incorporation of these compounds into fat containing foods more recent evidence have shown that esterification of these sterols increases their solubility in fat and their efficacy in lowering the low density lipoprotein ldl cholesterol levels so what plant derived sterols are they represent a group of compounds that are alcoholic derivatives of cyclopentanoperhydrophenanthrene and are an essential constituent of cell membranes in both animal cells as well as the plant cells cholesterol is the sterol of mammalian cells whereas multiple sterols or phytosterols are produced by plant with cytosterol campesterol and stigmasterol being the most commonly produced by the plants plant sterols although structurally similar to cholesterol are not synthesized by the human body they are very poorly absorbed by the human intestine too the specific plant sterols that are currently incorporated into foods intended to lower blood cholesterol levels are extracted from soybean oil or tall oil that is pine tree additional sources of plant sterols may be available in the near future the plant sterols currently incorporated into foods that are esterified to unsaturated fats creating sterol esters to increase lipid solubility thus allowing maximal incorporation into a limited amount of fat some plant sterols currently available are saturated to form the stanol derivatives cytostanol and campestanol which after esterification form stanol esters 
then what is their absorption and metabolism? The addition of methyl or ethyl group on the side chain of cholesterol results in poor intestinal absorption of plant sterols in humans. Thus only 1.5 to 5 percent of cytosterol is absorbed when typical amounts of sterols are consumed approximately 240 to 320 grams when we have consumed milligrams are consumed only 1.5 to 5 percent of cytosterols are absorbed. Differential absorption rates among plant sterols are related to the length of the side chain. The longer the side chain of the sterol the less is absorbed because of its increased hydrophobicity. Serum levels of cytosterol are 0.3 to 1.7 milligram per deciliter given a dietary intake of 160 to 360 milligrams per day of plant sterols. This wide range in a normal population suggests considerable individual variability in the handling of various plant sterols. Consumption of 3.24 grams per day of plant sterols has been shown to increase serum cytosterol and campesterol levels by an average of 40 and 70 percent respectively. Because dietary plant sterols can initiate the development of atherosclerosis and may increase the risk of premature coronary heart disease in hyper cholesterolomic patients the lowest serum levels of sterols are desirable. Hydrogenation of plant sterols to the corresponding stanols renders them virtually unabsorbable. Absorption of cytostanol has been estimated to be between 0 and 3 percent and serum levels are practically undetectable. So the dual effect of plant stanol. Plant stanol reduces the both cholesterol and plant sterol levels in serum. This may be of importance since elevated plant sterol concentrations have been identified as an independent risk factor for coronary heart disease. Two ABC transporters that is ABCG5 and ABCG8 play an important role in the regulating the intestinal absorption of plant sterols by resecreting previously absorbed plant sterols from the enterocytes back into the intestinal lumen. Mutations in these transporter proteins lead to a rare congenial disease called cytosterolemia which is characterized by severely elevated serum plant stanol concentrations, normal to moderately increased serum cholesterol concentrations and a high risk of developing CHD that is coronary heart disease at a very early age. Polymorphism in the ABCG5, ABCG8 genes help in modifying serum sterol levels in health non-cytosterolomics. Many studies have shown that the risk of developing heart disease increases more at normal plant sterol levels. Hence statins and plant sterols are to be used together as a combination therapy for improving serum lipoprotein profile and lowering serum plant sterol concentrations. How the cholesterol absorption takes place? The molecular mode of action of stanol esters is described in two steps. The step one cholesterol absorption occurs via the formation of micelles with bile acids. Stanols displace cholesterol from these micelles so that the less cholesterol is absorbed. Stanols need to be taken as part of a meal in order to be incorporated into the micelles. Step 2. In vitro studies have shown that stanols activate LXR alpha, LXR beta and ABCA1 transporter proteins. It is thus hypothesized that stanols work in enterocytes by activating the excretion of cholesterol back into the intestinal lumen. Only stanols have been proven to retain their efficacy in a long term use most likely due to the minimal absorption of stanols and consequently their lack of effect on bile acid metabolism. As a consequence of the reduced absorption of cholesterol the absorption of fat soluble compounds other than cholesterol such as vitamins and antioxidants may also be reduced like cholesterol, carotenoids and tocopherols are transported by lipoproteins. 
Since the number of LDL particles in circulation decreases after consumption of plant sterols or stanols, plasma concentration of carotenoids and tocopherols also decrease. This is why these antioxidants are often standardized to plasma lipid concentrations. After correcting the cholesterol levels, only the reduction in beta carotene level remained. It is important, however, that carotenoid and tocopherol levels remained within the normal ranges. Clinical trials also showed that when following the recommended diet, including consumption of vegetable and fruit, carotenoid levels did not decrease. Plasma concentrations of retinol, that is vitamin A, 25 hydroxy vitamin D, and vitamin K are unaffected by dietary plant sterols and stanols. This is very important thing one should really understood about the sterols, particularly which they are not in affecting the retinol or the vitamin D and vitamin D concentrations in the circulation. Effect of plant sterol containing fats on blood lipid levels. In the early 1990s, it was reported that cytostanol ester 3.4 grams per day delivered in the form of rape speed canola oil based margarine lowered LDL cholesterol levels by a 10 percent approximately in modestly hyper cholesterolomic subjects and that individuals with apolopa protein apo E4 LLs previously reported to have the highest efficacy of cholesterol absorption derived the greatest benefit from treatment. In addition, these studies demonstrate that the consumption of fats containing plant derived sterol esters is efficacious in both normolipidemic and dyslipidemic individuals, including those treated with beta hydroxy beta methyl glutaryl coenzyme A that is HMG CoA reductase inhibitors and other lipid lowering agents. Mechanism of action of plant stanol esters containing fats. Plant sterols differ structurally from cholesterol by methyl or ethyl group in their side chain and are not synthesized in the human body as we have mentioned earlier. These structural differences render them minimally absorbable, which is very important the structure function relation. Serum campesterol levels and stable isotope labeled cholesterol can be used to estimate the efficiency of intestinal cholesterol absorption in humans. This is the modern methodology now you could use the stable isotopes to study various molecules in the human metabolism of these particular compounds. Such data have confirmed the original observations from sterol balance studies that plant derived sterols decreases the absorption of both dietary and endogenously derived cholesterol in the intestine. It has been speculated that full magnitude in the decreased rate of cholesterol absorption that is 33 to 60 percent is not realized in decreased LDL cholesterol levels because of the compensatory mechanism that increase the rate of endogenous cholesterol synthesis. This speculation has recently been confirmed from the various studies. Lipoprotein kinetic studies have associated the significant decreases in the LDL cholesterol levels with a decreased production rate of LDL ApoB rather than a change in the LDL ApoB functional catabolic rate. The general lack of effect of plant derived sterols on HDL cholesterol levels was reflected in essentially no change in the kinetic parameters of HDL that is high density lipoprotein ApoA1. Potential risks associated with the use of plant stanol sterol ester containing fats. Few adverse effects related to either the short term or long term consumption of the plant stanol sterol esters containing fats have been reported. However, of concern are some observations of decreased levels of plasma alpha plus beta carotene, alpha tocopherol and or lycopene as a result of the consumption of foods containing both stanol esters and sterol esters. In general, with the exception of beta carotene, these decreases often parallel the decrease in total and LDL cholesterol. The activities of alkaline phosphatase, alanine transaminase, aspartame transaminase and gamma glutamate transaminase have been reported to be unaffected by plant sterol consumption with the recommended range. Of concern are the potential adverse effects of lowering beta carotene and perhaps other fat soluble vitamins over long periods of time in children who would be ingesting plant sterol containing fats. Likewise, data on the effect of these compounds in pregnant women are lacking. Because food products containing plant sterols are likely to be shared during meals by all family members, the potential for intake of 
non hypercholesterolomic individuals is significant. Now we discuss about the soy phytoestrogens. Soy foods are rich sources of the phytoestrogenic compound. Soybean composition if we look at is composed of both macronutrients and micronutrients. In the macronutrients such as lipids, carbohydrate and proteins are also to the highest range is possible in the soybean in the legumes list. Soybean lipids which are deprived of cholesterol contain about 15% of saturated fat, 61% of polyunsaturated fat and 24% of monounsaturated fat. Carbohydrates make up about 30% of the seed with 15% being soluble carbohydrates that is sucrose, raffinose, tachyose and 15% of insoluble carbohydrates that is dietary fiber. The protein content of soybean varies from 36 to 46 percent depend upon the variety. You could see the soybeans of various varieties. They could be varieties slightly yellowish white and also black and other colors too. Storage proteins are predominant such as 7S globulin that is beta conglycinin and 11S globulin that is glycinin which represents about 80 percent of the total protein content in the soybeans. Another 15 to 20 percent which are less abundant the storage proteins such as 2S, 9S and 15S globulins are also present in these soybeans. Interestingly beta conglycinin but not glycinin is capable of improving serum lipid profiles in mice and humans in the absence of phytoestrogens. Soybeans also contains micronutrients which include isoflavones, phytates, saponins, phytosterols, vitamins and minerals. Although beneficial effects of micronutrients such as saponins and phytosterols on cholesterol levels and absorption have been reported, there is an increasing body of literature suggesting that isoflavones may additionally have a beneficial role in lipid and glucose metabolism which is a very important uh, factor one should really think about for the current scenario of both coronary heart diseases and the diabetes. Soybeans are the most abundant source of isoflavones in food. Studies have shown that there is a large variability in isoflavone content and composition in soybeans, soy consumption and phytoestrogen levels. In soybean, isoflavones are tightly associated with proteins. The abundance of isoflavones varies according to soy variety and culture conditions but is also dependent on the way soybeans have been processed. Indeed, isoflavones can be dissociated from soy proteins using alcohol extraction which significantly diminishes the amount of bound isoflavone. This explains the substantial variability of phytoestrogen content found in soy products that is 0.1 to 5 milligram isoflavones per gram of soy protein in mature and roasted soybean, 0.3 milligram per gram of soy protein in green soybeans and tempeh, 0.1 to 2 milligram per gram soy protein in tofu and some soy milk preparations. Numerous studies have included the investigation of the plasma concentration of phytoestrogens and their metabolites in humans and animals consuming a diet with or without soy in humans consuming soy free diets. Plasma concentration of isoflavones are usually in the nanomolar range that is approximately less than 40 nanomolar range. In contrast, acute ingestion of dietary soy leads to a rapid increase in the plasma concentration of isoflavones up to the micromolar range. Pharmacokinetic studies confirm that healthy adults absorb isoflavones rapidly and efficiently. The fates of diadigin, genistin and their respective beta glycosides are similar. The average time taken after ingesting the egg glycons to reach peak plasma concentrations is 4 to 7 hours which is delayed to 8 to 11 hours for the corresponding beta glycosides. So that means what we have to understood is between the egg glycons and the beta glycosides. When they are in the egg glycons they are more rapidly absorbed than the beta glycosides. This suggests that the rate limiting step for absorption is the initial hydrolysis of the glycosidic mighty. The half-life for diadigin and genistin was reported to be 9.3 and 7.1 hours respectively indicating that the isoflavones or their metabolite are rapidly excreted. 
Finally, factors that might influence isoflavon bioavailability include intestinal microflora, food matrix, the administered dose, intestinal transit time, and the chemical composition of the dietary isoflavons. Complex hormetic compounds, the phytoestrogens. In plants, the synthesis of phytoestrogens such as isoflavones generally coincides with the environmental stresses such as pest infection, drought, lack of nutrients and so on. Recently, it has been suggested that stress-induced plant compounds upregulate stress resistance pathways in animals. This phenomena called xenohormesis proposes that the chemical cues from autotroph example plants provide an advance warning about the deterioration of the environment allowing heterotrophs example mammals to mount preemptive defense responsible while conditions are still favorable. This theory has been recently adopted to explain the health benefits provided by the stress-induced phytochemicals such as polyphenols, a group which includes stilbins, example resveratrol found in red wine and peanut, catechins, example epigallocatechin 3-gallate or EGCG found in green tea, anthocyanidins and most relevant to this section isoflavones. Similarly, we believe that the isoflavone genistin and diadigin mediates most of their biological effects through the modulation of key mammalian enzymes and receptors of stress response pathways or estrogen dependent pathways rather than through their well-known antioxidant or tyrosine kinase inhibitory properties. The affinity of phytoestrogens for estrogen receptors results in effects on the large number of estrogen regulated systems including the cardiovascular, metabolic, reproductive, skeletal and central nervous systems. A significant characteristic of isoflavones is their capacity to bind both to estrogen receptor alpha and beta with preferential binding of genistein to ERB. Specific binding affinity to ERs, that is estrogen receptors, enables isoflavones to elicit both estrogenic and anti-estrogenic effect depending on the tissue as well as on isoflavone and endogenous estradiol levels. For instance, in various cell lines, in the presence of physiological levels, that is 1 nanomolar of estradiol, genistin acts as an anti-estrogen, whereas at levels of E2 found in postmenopausal women, 0.01 nanomolar, genistin shows additive agonistic effects. Genistin also has ER-mediated biphasic effects in intestinal cell proliferation. Thus, isoflavones as stress-induced phytochemicals may provide health benefits through this, their selective estrogen receptor modulation activities. Role of estrogens in metabolism Studies in humans and rodents have shown that ERs are important mediators of the action of estrogen and lipid and glucose metabolism. Estrogens have been reported to affect adiposity either directly by modulating lipogenesis, lipolysis or adipogenesis or indirectly by modulating appetite or energy expenditure. The concept of estrogen modulating metabolizing features derived originally from the observation that postmenopausal women develop visceral obesity and insulin resistant as a result of low levels of estrogens. Interestingly, hormonal replacement therapy normalizes these symptoms. Estrogens also play an important role in glucose homeostasis and are known to modulate insulin sensitivity. Variations in human glucose homeostasis are observed during the menopausal cycle and diabetes becomes more resistant to treatment during the luteal phase. Relevant genetic evidence that estrogen modifies metabolism can also be found in humans. Individuals with mutations in the aromatase gene, an enzyme that converts androgens into estrogens, display truncal obesity, insulin resistance and hyperlipidemia. Estrogens have also been shown to modulate glucose metabolism in rodents. For instance, in models of type 2 diabetes, ovidiorectomy induces hyperglycemia, whereas in males, estrogen perfusion reverses diabetes. Look at the difference between males and females. The endocrine pancreatic function is also directly modulated by estrogen levels. Finally, estrogens have been reported to modulate energy homeostasis indirectly through the central nervous system and the hypothalamus. By synthesizing endocrine and metabolic signals, the hypothalamus engages distinct effector pathways which result in behavioral, endocrine and metabolic changes to maintain energy homeostasis. 
several hormones are capable of influencing energy intake and expenditure. For instance, leptin and insulin modulates the activity of hypothalamic neurons in the accurate nucleus, ultimately leading to the changes in the food intake. It has been shown recently that estrogen are among the hormones that modulate the energy balance. Deficiency in aromatase or ERs, alpha or oviorectomy decreases physical activity and energy expenditure, whereas treatment with E2 increases locomotor activity through an ER alpha dependent mechanism. Both estrogen receptors are found in hypothalamic nuclei and modulate food intake and locomotor activity. Overall, estrogen appears to be crucial regulators of metabolic functions by directly and indirectly via the central nervous system modulating energy homeostasis. Whether or not dietary soy or phytoestrogens have effects on energy homeostasis through estrogenic mimics is still a matter of controversial debate but is clearly a plausible hypothesis. Effects of soy protein and phytoestrogens on human metabolism. Consumption of more than 12.6 grams of soy proteins per day is associated with a lower risk of glycosuria, a strong predictor of diabetes. Similarly, several studies have reported that isoflavone consumption by postmenopausal women correlated with lower body mass index and higher HDL levels. Clinical studies also suggest that soy protein or isoflavones may improve metabolic parameters. Obese patients treated with soy protein isolates for 12 weeks had lower body weight and BMI with decreased cholesterol and LDL levels in the blood. Additionally, a 6 months clinical trial was conducted to compare the effects of isoflavone with that of conjugated estrogens on blood glucose, insulin and lipid profiles in postmenopausal Taiwan women. The study revealed that during fasting both glucose and insulin levels were significantly reduced by soy isoflavones that is 100 mg per day which was given and conjugated estrogens 0.625 mg per day. In contrast to the above mentioned trials, a significant number of studies reported an absence of beneficial effects of soy on classical metabolic parameters such as body weight, serum lipid profiles, fat mass, blood glucose and insulin profiles. These discrepancies make it difficult to draw from conclusions regarding the beneficial effects of soy on glucose and lipid metabolism. When comparing these different clinical trials, the underlying causes of conflicting results are probably related to the variability of experimental designs and exposition protocols, that is, route of administration, composition, dose, and duration of the study, and the capacity of individuals to produce equal and the genetic susceptibility. Thus, in conclusion, what we have learned today about plant sterols, particularly the stanol esters and the phytoestrogens from the soy foods. We have learned the phytosterols, stigmasterol, cytosterol, like sterol compounds which are origin from the phyto, that is plant origin products, which are, which competes with the cholesterol absorption. Therefore, cholesterol absorption inhibition takes place as well as the phytoestrogens which are formed from the soybean particularly having the highest concentrations. Example of diadigin, genistin, glycetin, these estrogenic compounds which also works as against cancer as well as they, they also works in the metabolism of other estrogenic compounds. Therefore, phytoestrogens and the plant sterols has been utilized against non-communicable diseases particularly for the cancer nowadays lot of work is going on in these areas both at the cardiovascular diseases and the cancer these molecules have been used particularly still research is going on we should concentrate on these molecules particularly through dietary diversification we can get lot of uh, phytoestrogens and from these things from the various foods. Thank you.